Hello everyone, this is Robert. Uh, just recently, Prusa released a nice big blog post talking about kind of a lot of improvements for the XL, mainly input shaping. So what I wanna do in this video is cover some of the things that are interesting to me in that blog post, and we're gonna be testing out input shaping. I have this ah, zombie hand that was printed without the alpha firmware, and this one right up there is being printed with the alpha firmware. So we'll talk about kind of the difference in time, different in speeds, and also the difference in quality. So let's get into it. So first off, please feel free to use the chapters and skip around. You can go right to the end and look at the quality comparison between the input shaping and the non-input shaping. I will not judge you for doing that. Secondly, I am using some noise reduction in post-processing because I'm right next to this thing. I don't want to act like I'm misrepresenting it as quieter than it really is. Here it is without any of the noise reduction. I'm doing this just for your benefit because it's just kind of noisy and annoying. So I turn on the noise reduction and it sounds a lot better. Not trying to misrepresent anything. It is noisy being right next to this thing. So what I wanna talk about in this video are like four different things. Um, I'm gonna go over the blog post a little bit. You can read the blog post. I'm not gonna do the YouTuber thing where I sit there and read it for you. There's a couple things that I'm interested in that I just kinda of wanna discuss. So we'll talk about that. Um, we're gonna talk about the network transfer speeds. How long does it actually take now with the alpha firmware to actually just transfer the thing over. We're gonna talk about the actual print times because I am finding, as some other YouTubers are finding, that the actual print times vary slightly or more than slightly from what the slicer is saying. And then we're gonna do an actual time and quality comparison between the new alpha firmware and the existing firmware. And I'll kind of talk about the differences between those two. So let's dump right into um, what the blog post talking about and some exciting new updates on the XL. So Prusa is getting really good at these long blog posts that just have a ton of information in them. And once again, I'm not gonna read it for you, but I have some notes of some interesting things that I did wanna talk about. Um, input shaping, obviously we'll get into that later, but they now have input shaping in alpha. And if you watch um, Tom Salamander, I always call him Tom Salamander because I don't know how to say his real name. Um, but if you watch Tom Salamander's channel, um, link down below, he did some testing with the Mark IV in the alpha firmware for input shaping versus the release. And it's very, very different results. So keep that in mind. There's very different results between the two. And I will say that with the uh, um, input shaping on this, there was no calibration, there was no running of the actual input shaping thing. So yeah, it's just the alpha, we'll keep it at that. Uh, next thing is stringing. I don't really have a big issue with stringing on my printer, but I definitely have seen in the forums a lot of people have had some issues with it. It definitely strings more than I'm used to. I'm used to like zero stringing. I've done some PETG on it, it's totally fine, um, but it does string a little bit more than you would expect. There is some stringing. Uh, they talked about this in the blog post, they recognize it, and they're saying that in the next few weeks they're gonna come out with a new option in the slicer to hopefully combat that, so we will see. Uh, cancel object, this is actually really cool, and if you do a lot of printing and a lot of like batch printing, this is kind of exciting and just a really neat feature. Um, so let's say you're doing a whole print bed full of widgets, and for some reason, one of them gets a blob on it or one of them lifts up or, you know, one of them is not usable, but the whole rest of the 50 others are totally fine. What this allows you to do is actually go into the menu on the printer, select that one, and then just not print it anymore, which is a really, really slick feature. Um, I've had the need for this many times to where one of them just messes up and it's like, oh, that one's gonna drag and bump into others. And if you stop the whole print, you've wasted the whole progress. So it's really cool to just be able to say, okay, just ignore that one from here on out and keep finishing the rest. So that's a really cool feature. Um, they also talked a lot about shipping timetables. You can read it because it's always complicated with Prusa, like orders on this date will ship, just read it. Um, but the interesting thing to me is they're moving through stuff and there might be a light at the end of the tunnel to upgrade this to five extruders. So hopefully a lot more people are gonna start getting these. That's gonna give a lot more feedback to them for various improvements, things like that. But I'm really hoping that within the next six months, I might be able to order three more extra extruders for this. Because once you get two, 
you realize that you want five. Um, I think getting this as a single extruder doesn't make any sense. I think the only reason to get an XL is to get multiple extruders. And if you're gonna get multiple extruders, you might as well just get all five. That's just my opinion. Uh, lastly, they did have information in air quotes on the Prusa uh, enclosure. So this is going to have some kind of enclosure. I think the only thing that they said about it was it's gonna have a full top hat thing and some kind of removable, maybe accordion um, front baffle, who knows. Um, but they did say in the next, I think couple months, I don't have it written down here, next couple months they're gonna have something for the enclosure. My guess is it's gonna be interesting and it's going to be relatively expensive we'll see um, but i am glad that that is at least on their roadmap so all that being said let's go and talk a little bit more about input shaping and what this video is actually supposed to be about okay so while we wait for this to finish um, let's talk about kind of the comparison process i tried to get these as apples to apples as i could um, so what I did is I printed this one with the standard stock firmware, which I think is 4.7.2. And I used the current version of the slicer, which is 2.6.1. So I used that combination together. I selected the 0.2 millimeter layer height um, profile and sliced it, sent it off to the printer. And for both of these tests, I measured when I sent it to the printer, how long it took to transfer, when it started printing, and I actually used uh, my energy monitor for my house to determine exactly how long it took. I looked for the power increase when the bed turned on to when it turned off at the end, so that gave me a good idea of exactly how long it took versus how long the slicer set. Then for this one that's printing up there, I upgraded the firmware and I've actually never done this on a, well, I've never done this on the XL before because why would I? Um, pretty simple process. You basically just copy the file over to a thumb drive, slap it in, hit the reset button, and then basically it just reboots and you're on the new firmware. So upgraded this to the 5.1 alpha firmware and then use the, all these numbers are just 2.7 slicer, whatever, the new slicer, the new alpha slicer, and selected the closest um, setting that I could. It's a 0.2 millimeter. There were some slight differences, but I made sure to change anything so that they were apples to apples as much as I could. And what I was looking for is I wanted to make sure that the printed weight was almost identical between them because ultimately what I care about is making sure that I'm putting down the right amount of filament. Like if I go to minimal infill and minimal outer walls, it's gonna print a lot less filament. It's gonna be quicker. So I wanted to make sure that the actual weight of the final product was as close to the same as it could be. And then that's what's printing. So as soon as this is finished, we'll go and compare all the results. Okay, so both of these zombie hands have finished printing, so it's time to look at the data. I've got my um, little cheat sheet down here. Um, so in this section, I'm going to talk about the times and how long everything took. And then the next section, we'll look, actually look at these and talk about the quality difference between the two. But first up, let's talk about the non-alpha firmware, the stock firmware. I'm going to call this the standard. So I started this print at 12.10 a.m. YouTuber life is pretty rough. Uh, started this at 12.10 a.m., hit the upload button. It was a 47 meg file um, for this, and it took six minutes to upload to the machine, and then another seven minutes uh, for the bed leveling, bed heating, and everything else. So it was 13 minutes from the time I clicked the button to when it actually put filament down for the first level, first layer, whatever. So 13 minutes, 12.10 to 12.23 a.m. The slicer said that it was supposed to take seven hours and 42 minutes, but in actuality, I measured this using uh, my energy meter. Um, I looked at when it started and when it stopped, the um, energy usage between them. When it actually stopped printing was eight hours and 31 minutes, so it underestimated it by about 50 minutes. So that is actually pretty interesting. So it took six minutes to upload the 47 meg file and ended up taking eight and a half hours for the total print, okay? So now if we look at the second one, the input shaper, and I actually don't know which one's which, but if we look at the alpha input shaping, I started that at 9.46 a.m. this morning. So had a little bit of time to recover. 9.46, it took one minute 
to upload the file, which was only 11.8 megs. So one of the things that Prusa is saying that they're doing is they're actually compressing or compacting down the G-code file because there's a lot of redundancy and a lot of waste in an ASCII file. They have a better explanation of it, but they're basically compressing the file down so you're not transferring as large of a file. But it was one minute for, you know, let's call it a 12 meg file, where it was six minutes for a 47 meg file. So not only is the network marginally faster, but it's also transmitting a much smaller file. So we already saved five minutes off of just transferring the file over to the machine. The startup procedure actually takes exactly the same amount of time. It was seven minutes once again, so seven minutes on both. So it was seven minutes plus the one minute transfer. So I started at 9.46, took eight minutes until it started printing, started printing at 9.54. And the slicer said it was gonna take five hours and nine minutes. It ended up taking five hours and 11 minutes. So it was two minutes off. Maybe there's some rounding. I didn't you know, track the actual minutes. Maybe there's some rounding, but effectively it took exactly what it thought it was gonna take. So that's really interesting. The input shaping is more dead on in the time estimates, at least for what I printed here. And a little note, what I chose was something that had a lot of little things on it. I could have just done like a big cube or something like that, which would have taken more advantage of the input shaping because it has nice long travel, so it could have traveled faster, whatever. Um, I think this is a good example of what most people are gonna care about for the input shaping. And we can also see the ringing and the details and things like that in the next section. But that is kind of interesting. It's about a 40% reduction in the amount of time it takes. And we're seeing a pretty massive reduction in the amount of time it takes to transfer the file over. Now in the blog article, they talked about this idea of streaming to where it was gonna like transfer over a small snippet of it, the printer would start and then it would transfer the rest. I think that's only with the Prusa Connect. This did not do anything until the full file was transferred. So I think if you use like their cloud service, transmit up to that, then it can start streaming. I didn't do any of that. So this is just if you're transferring to it directly over your own network. So pretty interesting, 47 megs down to 11.8 megs, six minutes to transfer the file down into one minute. And we went from eight and a half hours down to just over five hours. So pretty interesting, but how similar do they look? Let's get a closer look and see if you can tell which one's which. So here are the two finished zombie hands. And right now I'm not really sure which is which, but why don't you take a close look at them, see what you think. They printed really nicely, both of them. Um, this is filamentum. I'm not sure exactly what the filament color is. I'll have a link down below if you're interested, but filamentum stuff always prints really nice. And it's why I used it for this test. So let's swap them just so they're in the right frame. Yeah, so both of them looked really good. And I think if you had someone here physically and said, pick which one, which one's the better one, which one's input shaping, which one's not, you could do it 100% of the time, no problem. Um, you can easily tell in person, you know, with a little bit of examination, which one's better. But if I didn't tell you anything, they, they would look the same. If you didn't really know what you were looking for, you'd probably think they're the same. The one difference, um, I'll tell you right now. Oh, <laughs> okay. This one here is the input shaping and this one is the non-input shaping. And that might be just a little bit of the camera. The non-input shaping one has maybe a little bit less detail overall, maybe. I'm just kind of maybe guessing, but they look pretty much the same. The one big difference is up here on this finger. It might be really hard to show on camera, but this is an overhang. It's printed vertically like that, right? So this is an overhang. This is the input shaping, and you can just see a little bit more drooping and roughness. And on the standard, a lot less, some amount less very, very close. Um, they're very similar. I think for the amount of time, it's probably not really worth it to go with the standard unless it's just an overnight print and you have 
the extra time, but generally speaking, they look pretty much the same. The um, input shaping does have a little bit more stringing, but you probably can't really even see it in this video. Um, this is, yeah, this is still the input shaping one. So that's what it looks like. Tons of detail. And there's what the other one looks like. So I'm not trying to really sell it either way. I don't really care what you end up liking, but they're very close. They're really, really close in person. So there's just a little bit more stringing. The bridging isn't as good, obviously, because you're you know just doing these unsupported overhangs a lot quicker. Um, the nails might have significantly less detail. That one was the input shaping. It's minimal. It's really, really minimal. And if you're doing more kind of engineering uh, mechanical models like what I do, you would most likely not see a difference. Now, in the background, what you might hear is some ringing tests. I'm printing out a couple of ringing tests at the um, standard and the input shaping firmware. So we're going to go take a look at what those look like because I can't really see any specific quality differences between these two. So let's go see what a ringing test looks like. But while I wait for that to finish, here is a slow pan on both of them and see if you can guess which is which. The left is the standard, the right is the input shaping. I think the left overall just kind of is a little bit shinier, I guess, but it's hard to say. Um, you know, you pick which one's your favorite. I think for the time savings, it's probably worth it for this negligible bit of difference. So here is the result from the ringing test. This is, I think this is um, CNC Kitchen posted this. They're very similar. I'm not really sure if I could pick one over the other. Neither of them are fantastic. They all have just a little bit of that ringing, a little bit of that fuzziness to them. Um, I think they might look a little bit worse in person. But yeah, that's what they look like. I think. This top one has just a little bit more on the trailing side in some cases, maybe. Oh. The bottom one's actually the input shaping, which is kind of interesting. But yeah, they're very similar. I don't know like if I mix these up, if I could pick one. But neither of them are fantastic. I'm really curious to see what Prusa does when they actually get a real implementation, a non-alpha implementation of Input Shaper. Because right now, we're not even running an accelerometer and actually reading in real values. We're just using generic values. And yeah, if I look at this one, look at the end of the T on the top one, you can see a lot more just trailing stuff towards the end where it doesn't have as much at the end. So interestingly enough, the input shaping one I think is overall better than the non-input shaping. And this one definitely prints a little bit faster, just a few minutes faster because it's a relatively simple small part. But yeah, just kind of interesting. So all this got me thinking, how fast is the XL in the alpha input shaping mode versus something like the Bamboo X1C, which is established and has everything figured out in terms of speed. So I took this same file, brought it into the Bamboo Slicer, selected 0.2 layers, and hit slice, and ended up with two and a half hours, so about half the time that the XL takes. At first I was very confused, but then I thought about it a little bit more and looked at it, and there are some big differences. To compare apples to apples, we need to do a couple things. The bamboo is a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. This is a 0.6. So when we print at the exact same layer height, assuming we have the same number of walls and infill and all that stuff, this will actually print more material because it's going to have fatter infill and it's gonna have fatter walls. So you're actually having more structure if you wanna think about it that way. And if we look at the slicer in bamboo, they claim that it's gonna have about 67 grams of filament. This is gonna have about 140 grams. So it's about double the amount of filament in the model for the XL versus the bamboo. We need to make a couple assumptions here. We need to assume that the bamboo is gonna be dead on accurate in the slicer. You know, it was for the XL for the input shaping, but let's just assume that the quality is similar and the slicing time is gonna be the same in reality. So let's just kind of assume that. 
So what I did is I took the um, slicer settings for bamboo and I adjusted them. Um, I made the walls a little bit thicker. Um, I think I, I changed the infill a little bit. Basically what I was trying to do is I was trying to make it so the bamboo would end up printing the same amount of material, same layer height, same overall settings in general, but I wanted to make it so that it was still printing 140 grams of material, the same as this was, because that's only fair. So I did that and it ended up surprisingly, I'm not even making this up, five hours and nine minutes. It was exactly what the XL was, which I thought was really surprising. Turns out that when you print the same amount of material in the same amount of layer heights for the same model, they come out to about the same. I also did this for the 0.6 millimeter nozzle in bamboo and came up with roughly the same thing. It was maybe a little bit quicker, like by a couple minutes, five hours and six minutes, something like that. But what's really interesting is it really goes to show how much time bamboo has spent perfecting those print profiles for speed. They are really, really good at delivering a product that looks fantastic and is really, really quick. Prusa is kind of coming out from a different angle. They're trying to go for structural quality and, you know, multiple walls and things like that. But when you kind of change the two print profiles to be apples to apples, they come out to very similar speeds. Now what I got to do in some future video is change a Prusa print pro profile to get it to two and a half hours like bamboo. And I'm not even sure if that's possible, but you get kind of where I'm getting at is they are similar speeds, although I need to do more testing. So that was a lot of testing. Hopefully you got something out of this. I know that I got something out of it. I think what I got out of it is input shaping is coming. Um, I think it definitely will help the speed on this machine, but I think there's so much more to do in terms of tweaking those print profiles and actually getting the alpha into a fully featured actual input shaping. Um, I don't, I'm not making any negative comments on it right now. It's just that it's not even doing, I haven't ever tuned it. There's no option in the um, printer to actually run the input shaping calibration. It's still just kind of a generic profile for everyone's machine. So once we get the actual calibration, then I'm sure there's gonna be even more speed gains and even more quality gains from it because well, you know, you're actually measuring the physical machine. So we will see how that ends up working out. But hopefully you got something out of this video. Let me know if you have any comments, questions. All that engagement is just wonderful. So um, yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.